Today we're talking about payment terms, what they are, how to set them up in Odoo, and what impact they have in Odoo. First, let's define what a payment term is. It's an agreement between a buyer and a seller outlining how, when, and the method of payment. This can be between two businesses, B2B, or between a business and a customer, B2C. Examples of payment terms include immediate, net 30, net 60, etc. In Odoo, we will have payment terms with both vendors as well as customers. Let's take a look at this now. We'll go up to the accounting module and under the configuration, we're going to select payment terms. Here you'll see we have some default payment terms already created, some of which we noted earlier. Today we're going to be creating a new payment term to show how this works in Odoo. Here we have our payment terms form, and this is where you're going to name the payment term and specify um, if it's for one company or if it applies to everyone. Um, so you can select this company and specify it there. Um, if you'd like to add an explanation to the invoice, that can be added on the description on the invoice details. And then below, we can actually create the rules here for your terms. So by default, this balance will be here and should be the last line to ensure that the whole amount is actually allocated. Now, the payment term we are creating today is going to be 21 days uh, with a 25% due each week. So below in our rules, we need to tell the system that our customer will pay 25% of their bill and it should be paid in full by 21 days. To do this, we're going to go ahead and add a line and we'll specify our terms. On this screen, we'll specify the term type. We have balance, which is the total of the invoice. We've got percent here, which can specify a value. And we've got fixed amount, which we can specify a specific whole dollar value um, based on the invoice. Then we'll note how we want the due date computed. So for example, we're going to use the days after the invoice, but there are others as we can see here listed. Uh, we can also go ahead and set a date of the month on which we would like to have the payment due, but we're going to go ahead and roll with the percent for this one. We're going to specify our value at 25%. We'll leave it at due at zero for this particular one, and we're going to save and close. We can then reorder the rules below by dragging and dropping them into place. We'll continue this process only changing the date on which it is due. So we'll have an additional 25% due on days 7 as well as 14. And then finally, we'll have our balance that will be due on day 21. And again, choosing balance will take into account any rounding issues. For example, if our total was an odd number and there was a remaining balance of 100.256, it would accommodate for that and make sure it was allocated. All right, let's go ahead and add a description for our invoice here. We're just gonna copy the payment terms and paste it below. All right, we'll go ahead and save that. Jumping back out to our payment terms, you can see that it's been added below down here at the bottom. Um, and now we're ready to see how it works in Odoo in action. So let's go to our sales module. We're gonna create a new quote. Uh, our customer is gonna be the general store. So we'll get that in there. Invoice address looks good. We'll set up our payment term, 21 days, the 25% down. Okay, we're gonna use chair and nice round number 300 so that'll work well for us today we're going to confirm that sales order and we're going to go ahead and process through the delivery order as well okay great now let's go back to our sales order up here in the breadcrumbs and we're going to create our invoice we're going to do a regular invoice create and view invoice Awesome. Now we have our customer draft with our product listed here. Um, by going down to the journal items tab, we can see that we have each of our payment terms defined here along with the due date. Now, sometimes the due date might not be there. So if you click on the ellipsis here, um, you can add additional fields. So this looks good. We're ready to go ahead and confirm this. We're going to move it from draft to posted. All right. 
Now I want to show you how this will appear in our age receivables as well. So we'll create a new tab and open up our accounting um, module. So we'll go up to the re age receivables report. We're going to pull that up and then we're going to drill down by going up to partners and filtering out to our general store customer. Okay, um, and now we can see that we have our balance here and if we drill down into this customer further, we can see the payment terms as well as their total amount due. So we have the four broken out payments of $75. We can also see this on a partner ledger, which can be viewed from the reporting drop down menu or we can go to the customer form and there's actually a smart button with the partner ledger available there as well. So we're going to open that up here on our partner form. Um, our customer form and from the partner ledger we can see again all of the breakdowns of the payments that are for this particular customer. Now we want to show you what happens when we go back to our invoice and actually register a payment. So today is the 13th and the customer should be providing their first payment. We're going to go ahead and register the payment for $75. Change that out here. And we're going to go ahead and create payment. You'll see the payment difference here and we're going to keep this particular one open until all of the payments are complete. So we'll save that. Now everything you can see here we have our partial payment we can see that it was paid on 313 we'll go back to our partner ledger and refresh that so here we can actually see that uh, p is our matching number here and it's noting that it's been reconciled with that particular invoice and the 75 dollars payment has already been credited to our account on 313.23. And so our balance remaining is 225. Now, when the customer makes the next payment, um, an additional $75 payment will be noted here as well, and the balance will again change. And this will continue until the balance is reached and the customer lo no longer owes us anything. So this is how payment terms work in Odoo. You should now be able to create a payment term with your own rules and understand the impact it will have on the reporting that occurs in Odoo Accounting. And that's all for us today. We'll see you next time.